Welcome back to the channel. This is Nicholas from Morales and this is episode number 14 of our tutorial series where we are cloning Rarible using Morales. Now in the previous episode we uh, completed the feature of uh, listing the items uh, available for purchase in our marketplace and on, in this episode we will uh, implement the feature of buying from the marketplace and that will complete like the main um, feature of a marketplace. And uh, before we get started, we want to fix a, a cloud function that we created recently, and we want to fix the get items. And um, the thing that we want to adjust is the filter of the owner, because in some cases it can be better to do this filtering on the client, because uh, maybe the client wants uh, some data from the users, uh, from the items that is owned by the user. So we can remove this and let's implement this on the client instead. So let's save this and go back to our file. And uh, in the main.js, we are going to adjust the load items uh, function. And what we want to do now is that we want to get uh, the user. So we copy this uh, line here. So user equals await Morales user current. And then uh, inside each loop, we can check if um, the user, and uh, if the user is logged in, then we can check if a user dot attributes and dot accounts dot includes. So if it includes the item dot um, owner of, the owner of this item, owner of. Very good. And if, if it is so, then we can just return from this uh, uh, iteration here, and then it will skip to the next to the next item. So this is it to uh, filter out on the client. Now let's uh, implement the function of buying items. So let's do buy um, item equals an async function that will take the item that we want to buy, and uh, inside here we define. Um, the user, so we can take the user again, like this, we get the user, and we check if uh, not user, um, so if the user is not logged in, then we can log in uh, and uh, return. Because uh, we are listing items for sale, just like on uh, Rarible, um, we can see uh, buttons for placing bids and um, instant purchasing without being logged in. And if we click this, then we want to log in. So this is what we're doing. So we're logging in and then we return and then the user can click the button again to, to buy the item. And uh, now we can just call the contract by doing a wait uh, marketplace contract that methods uh, methods dot buy item and uh, we are going to specify the ID of the item that we want to buy, and we can find this in item uh, item dot uid, and then we send this, and uh, we send this from uh, the user uh, dot get the eth address. So uh, the address of the current user, and then we also set the value. Uh, to item dot asking price. So now we will buy the item and this is it to, to buy the item. And then uh, we want to trigger this function uh, when the user clicks uh, the button uh, for the specific item that they want to buy. So we can copy this uh, uh, line here and we assign the on click to an inline function like this. And then we call buy item and we place uh, the item inside here. So this will buy the item and uh, call this function whenever the user clicks on a specific item that they want to buy. Very good. And uh, then we can implement another cloud function. And we want to implement get item instead of get items. So in some cases, you want to retrieve a specific item. And to do this, we can just uh, copy this whole um, get items one, and uh, we are going to repeat ourselves just a little bit. You can um, simplify this and make it more nice uh, if you want to um, by ext um, moving some of the logic out to another function. But let's just stick with this. We don't care if the item is sold or not. So we could just do uh, instead equal to uh, the UID 
to the request dot params the parameters dot uid and uh, then we want to get the first one because uh, there is only one option because this is unique either the item exists uh, and uh, in that case it will only be one result and if it doesn't exist then it will uh, return uh, undefined so we can get we can rename this to query result and um, we can check if not query result if we didn't get anything back then we can uh, just return uh, but if we did get something back then we can remove some of the things here we can remove all the way up here and we type return so we return this object we can remove this um, parentheses here and we can remove these two lines so we return this object now now we're trying to access an array so we need to rename this to just remove the uh, s and the and the position here so we do this this this, this, and this. So this is it for getting a single item, and it doesn't care if it's sold or not. We just return it. So we save it here, and we go back to our code. And the reason that we want to do this is that we want to listen for events on the server and get items whenever uh, these events are triggered. And to do this, we can go up to the top here and uh, we are going to implement uh, something called live queries. And we can find uh, information of, uh, about this in the documentation. So there is this section about live queries. And uh, what you can do is that you can subscribe to a table in the database. And whenever something happens to that table, you can get a notification with that item that was being changed or added or removed or whatever. And so we want to subscribe to the sold items and the items for sale and tables. And we want to listen to the respective create events. And then we will get the object that is being created. And then we can do stuff with that. So let's go back to our code and implement this. So what we want to do now is that we can define const uh, sold items query. And we set this equal to new moralis dot query as uh, stated in the documentation and then we say the name of the table which is uh, sold items in our case and uh, then we can define the subscription sold items subscription equals uh, await sold items query dot subscribe which is uh, what i want you to do to this channel and um, if you like it and then we can define the callback uh, function that will be triggered whenever something matches this uh, query. So um, we can do this by writing the function on uh, item sold. And uh, this will be an async function that will take uh, the item that was uh, sold and uh, give it, put it inside here so we can uh, do stuff. And then we can get the listing. Uh, if this is listed in the items uh, currently for sale, we want to remove it because it's now sold. So we can do a listing equals document document dot get element by ID. And remember from the last episode that we defined this structure uh, for when we list the items. So we do item dash and then um, the item dot UID. And uh, this is actually inside uh, item that attributes dot uh, UID. And uh, so this will uh, get the list listing back. And um, remember to have these back ticks because this is how you do the template string. So now let's check if listing, if we found the listing, then we want to remove it. So we do listing dot parent node dot remove child and the listing so now it's removed from the list uh, if it exists uh, but it also could be the case now that the user is the one who bought the item so we want to check for this so we can take um, this line here and we can uh, get the user user equals this and then we can check if uh, the user is uh, logged in because this event can be triggered if even if the user is not logged in so things can be removed uh, from the screen, even though the user is not logged in. But if the user is logged in, and if the user uh, dot get uh, accounts dot includes 
uh, the uh, the item dot attributes dot buyer, which is uh, one of the uh, parameters that uh, we send in our event. So if uh, the buyer is any of the addresses uh, contained in the account linked to the current user, then we want to fetch the whole item because this is limited. We um, we only get this row from the sold items. We don't get the linked one. We don't get the token. We don't get the user, but we want that in order to display it. So that's why we wrote the cloud function, the extra cloud function. So let's um, define the parameters that the cloud function wants. So const and params equals a new object, and it will take a UID, which is what we specified. And um, we do these uh, backticks again. So we can copy this paste it here and remove the item dash. So we just give the UID. This is enough for the parameters. And now let's do new um, variable called sold item. And this is uh, a weight uh, moralis dot cloud uh, cloud dot run. So we run the cloud function that we wrote called get item. And we pass in the parameters that we uh, specified uh, with this UID. And now we will get uh, the sold item back if it exists. So we need to check first if we get a sold item back. If this is the case, then we want to get and render item data, the sold item and render render user item. This is the render function. So this will place this new item uh, in the list of the items owned by the current user. Very good. So let's just hook this up to the, the subscription event. So let's do sold uh, item subscription dot on on the create event. Whenever a new item is uh, inserted into this sold items, we will trigger this on sold on item sold. Good. And now let's do the same thing with the um, items for sale table. And we can call this um, items uh, added query and we can call this um, items added subscription so we copy this here and we take the name here and then instead of the on item sold we do on item added and then we copy this function here and we are going to keep most of it so let's do on item added and we are going to move this chunk of code up here and so we still get the item, but instead of sold item, we can call it uh, added item. And um, if it is the case that we got something back, then we want to check the user. So we check the user here. Uh, is it the user that added this item? Because it could be someone else somewhere else that added an item and we want to display it still. So if the user is the one who added the item, then we should do, uh, first of all, the added item and not attributes, but uh, added item dot owner up. Because uh, this is uh, something that is returned from this um, cloud function, this owner of. And uh, if the owner of this new uh, item is uh, one of the accounts owned by the user, then we can uh, get and render this um, added item and to the list of the items owned by the current user. But if it was not the user uh, who created the item, it was someone else, and um, maybe they, was not, they were not even logged in, then we want to add it to the main list but we don't want to do that for the current users, so we just return from here. So down here, we can copy this line, but instead of passing it to the render a user item, we just pass it to the user uh, render item. So added item, we pass it to the render item. And uh, let's see if we hooked everything up. Yes, we did, so let's try it out. So we go to uh, our place here, we refresh, so we get everything from scratch. Now I re removed all the previous items. So let's create an, a new item. And this is another user in another browser. So let's see how the live events are triggered. It's really cool. So we go back here and we create an item. Uh, my cool NFT. And if you, as you can see here in my items, it's empty. So let's see what happens now when we 
we when we create it. So let's just take a random price. Uh, it's an instant buy, and um, we select the, my face, and then we create, and then we confirm, we confirm, and now we add it to the marketplace, and if we inspect here. Uh, we see query results attributes is not find. Uh, this is in the cloud function. So we made a mistake. Query result attributes. So let's go to here, here, and then we check here. We made a mistake. Maybe you saw it. I didn't. So we save this and we try again. So give this a few seconds. And if we update now, um, we don't see it. Yeah, because it's in my items. And uh, if we open this up and we create uh, yet another item, so we can call item uh, two, and uh, let's refresh this one as well, because now uh, is this the same? Let's see here, fresh my items, it's inside here. And this is not the same user, so it shouldn't be my items. Who is the user? It ends with uh, 5B and uh, this user um, ends with 5B. Oh, it's the same user. Okay, so let's um, import a new user. Let's take uh, this one. Thought it was strange. So let's do, uh, come on. I import account, import this, and we connect it. We log out from here, we refresh, and then we connect wallet and good. So now this user is ends with the 97. And if we go back here now, um, uh, first of all, it shouldn't contain anything in my items. Okay, good. And now when we've uh, fixed the cloud function, we can create a new item. So we call it uh, like item two and do this. And then we give it a price. And then we set an instant buy and we select maybe uh, another file this time so we can separate them and we create and confirm, confirm and confirm. And now it, this is contained in my items. Pretty cool. And here it is now available for purchase, but it is not contained in my items. So if we now uh, buy this, confirm, it disappeared and now it's in my items. And if we go back here, um, if you go back here, uh, maybe I didn't trigger this correctly. So yeah. Um, you had to refresh. In the next episode, we will fix this issue uh, to also remove it from my items when someone else um, buy, uh, buys it. And then uh, we will also make it possible to, um, to resell items that you currently own. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this um, uh, episode uh, with live queries. And uh, I hope to see you guys in the next episode. Bye.